Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited for checking out Edge of Humanity from Golden Egg Games. This is for two to five players. Age is 13 plus, it'll take about 45 minutes to play, and in Edge of Humanity, you are at, well, the Edge of Humanity. This is a post-apocalyptic deck-building game where you're going to scrap and scrounge to try to stay alive by bidding and spending your cards and actually losing your cards in order just to build things and do what you need to do. All the while, you're going to be faced with absolutely terrible events that will just continue to punch you in the stomach. It's an unforgiving, difficult game. Non-cooperative, but is it good? Let's open it up. I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Edge of Humanity. So first of all, we're going to get a handy dandy rule booklet. It's 12 pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's well done. It should have you up and running pretty smoothly. Uh, lots of pictures and illustrations and examples, which I like an awful lot. And honestly, the last couple pages are all about setting up your second game, your third game, and games in the future. So a uh, relatively short rule booklet for the most part. So in Edge of Humanity, this is a deck building game where you're going to start with a pretty crummy deck of cards. Then you're going to be slowly building up your deck of cards by recruiting survivors, building strongholds, uh, and making some very difficult decisions in this post-apocalyptic uh, world that you are living in in so we'll go over the components then we'll get into the gameplay so first you've got your base down here now in the second and third game you'll start getting this firearm but i just want to put it out here for for funsies sake that's also why these bullets are out here you won't use these bullets in the first game but after that you'll use the bullets in each game because some of the decisions that you have to make deal with whether or not you should fire your firearm because uh, this game really tries heavily to uh push the theme through in the game, to make the game thematic, which I really like, and so shooting a firearm is a decision in this game that should not be taken lightly. You're also going to have health right here because you'll have a certain number of health, and once you lose all the health, you are dead. Now, that does that's not the end of the world, though, because once you lose all your health, you're just done for the round. It's kind of like skip a turn to a certain extent, where you lose that turn, but then you come back at full health. Uh, which I'll get my thoughts on a little bit later. Right here we have the survivor row. There's always going to be some survivors that will be out here, and you can recruit these survivors by paying the resource cost. So essentially, if you wanted this college student, you'd say, hey, come over here. Look, I got these three resources. I got tons of resources. Come on over. And they're going to give you, most of the time, a persistent special ability. So for her, hand size plus one, that's great, because having a large hand size in this game is very, very nice. She's also going to give you one star, which is the victory points in the game because whoever the first person is to get 11 points or until you go out uh, until you run out of the events which I'll talk a little bit about later will win the game so this one's going to give you one victory point and it's going to increase your hand size for the rest of the game and there's a lot of different survivors, especially once you start getting to game two and game three. They'll do various different stuff. Uh, some will help you with your gun. Some will just give you flat victory points. Uh, we have the contract over here who's really great, especially if you can build buildings because you are going to have buildings that you'll be able to build that will also give you persistent special abilities. So by the end of the game, everybody's little area here is going to be slightly different. Everybody's going to be playing a little bit of a different game, which I kind of like as well. You also notice that there's a tent up here. That's just to keep these cycle of survivors moving because that person is the unlucky camper and if they're not bought they are dead but these will replenish at the end of a round uh, up here we have the bidding row now this is really interesting this isn't like your typical deck builder where you're like all right i'm gonna buy this card i'm gonna buy this card no in fact in this game you're actually going to be bidding for what cards you would like to get and these are the cards that you'll have the potential to get up here and as no one buys them they will get more and more lucrative so at the beginning of the game you're going to set out uh, x number of these sets of two cards and x being more the, the number of players plus one so everyone will always have a choice if they want to buy something uh, but you actually have to physically trade in your resources you are literally bartering right now to get these cards and i'll show you a little bit more about that later uh so last we got our handy dandy round summary down here which also on the back has a list of the different symbols very very useful and then of course we have the events they try to make this a very thematic game and you're going to have a different set of events for each time you play the game depending on the scenario you're playing or uh, if you create your own scenario. Last but not least, I will show you the handy dandy score tracker, which is in fact not handy or dandy. It looks really cool, but I, I actually hate this score tracker. I'll tell you a little bit more about it later, uh, but this is where you're gonna be keeping track of your star points right there. It does look cool though, so I'll give them that. Oh, and a pawn to keep track of your your uh, your color, which will boop, match right there. 
So, what are you going to do on a turn? First thing you're going to do is you're going to draw an event card and apply its effect. So this is really... Oh, some of these events, they are just absolutely just punch you in the stomach. And this whole game is punch you in the stomach, which I really like. But on the back, you're going to get some text. And this is going to tell you a little bit about what's happening in the game. They try to make it very thematic. It doesn't come across as much as I would like it to, which is a little bit unfortunate. But I'll talk more about that in pros and cons. So I'd hope that we'd left most of them behind. But we ran into a mob of mutated survivors. They had lost all capacity for reason. And yeah, you get it. Uh, so lose two life. You may fire a weapon and discard three cards to gain one star point, though. So that's that's very, very lucrative. So we're being attacked by mutants right now. We're guaranteed to lose two life. Like, that's done. That is going to happen. But we also, if we fire a weapon, we're going to have to discard three cards, but we gain a victory point. And these are going to be interesting choices, especially as you get later into the game, when you start running low on health. And then you're like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fill my weapons these times, because they're, yeah... Anywho, everybody's going to make this decision. And starting with the first player, you're going to have what's called the action plays. Each player play may perform one action and then refill their hands. So our hand size right now is five. Let's take a look at some of the starting cards you get. And everybody's going to get the same starting cards. So we got supply crates. These are what you are going to build building with. Buildings will look like... I thought we saw it with a safe house. Where in the world... Uh, oh yeah, a safe house. So a safe house is going to look like this. It will cost you four supply to build this. Now one thing is you don't have to build it immediately. You can kind of just set it out and cock it like this a little bit to let people know that you were in the process of building this. And then eventually you will be able to build it and it will increase your hand size by one and give you plus two stars. Now let's take a look at this card though right here because this is a great example. So this is the building cost to build something. These red numbers right here. And as you can see, that's how many supplies you're going to need to do anything and you actually physically lose these cards they go into the contaminated area which is a, a spot over here essentially the trash area uh, so you speak because you actually have to give up your resources in order to build the safe house which actually thematically makes sense down here we have the star points and up here we have is how much this is worth so if you are willing to give this away you have a five bid which is how you're going to be able to bid on these cards up here uh, but another thing is, this is a little bit like Dominion, where you only have one action at the beginning of the turn, unless, of course, you play cards that give you more actions. So this Fire Camp, which, by the way, <laughs> that's a funny little typo there, uh, Fire Camp instead of Campfire, is allow, going to allow you to heal one, which is great, but it's also going to allow you to gain one action, so you'll be able to play another card. So we just lost two health because of uh, the mutant attack, so you know what? We're just going to play the Fire Camp, which will allow us to gain one health, great, and then take another action. And you know what? We'll do this looting. So take a supply card from one of the trade piles and place it on top of your discard pile. So you know what? We would take this a lot of supplies because that's a really great card to have. Put it on top of our discard pile. These would go to our discard pile. We've used all our actions right now. And now we would draw back up to five. And that's our entire action phase. Our action phase is done. It would go over to the next action phase, the next person, the next person, until we get back to us. At which point we would get to the trade phase. Now this is where we are going to bid for the trade pile of cards cards up here. You can bid uh, any number you want. You don't have to bid at all. But remember, you are using these numbers right here to bid. And once you bid it, you lose it. Whoever wins the most gets the first pile, second most gets the second pile, so on and so forth. Next, you get to phase four, the recruit phase. is where you're going to recruit a new survivor from their hand. So if you have a survivor in your hand, then you can recruit them. Because when you first purchase these people, uh, they go into your discard pile. But eventually, they will go into your hand, which means you will then be able to get them. Now, that's another interesting mechanism of the game, is how you actually get the recruits. Because you can only recruit someone when you reshuffle your deck. So, you know, in, in deck builders, eventually you're going to run out of cards. Then you'll shuffle in your discard pile. That is the time where you can pay to recruit one of these people. Uh, so, one of those really interesting mechanisms feels slightly a bit fiddly when you're first starting the game. But uh, towards, you know, once you get going, it just feels like a natural thing. Like, oh, I'm reshuffling my deck, so now I can get people. And it actually is a valid strategy to cycle through your hand very fast so you can start recruiting people and gaining their persistence abilities. 
Uh, but then you're going to do the cleanup phase where you're going to draw a new trade pile. So let's just pretend nobody bid. And boom, just like that, these trade piles have just gotten a little bit more lucrative. And we're going to continue on on our merry way, doing the rest of the, the cleanup stuff, and then revealing a new event. Now you're going to keep going until someone has got 11 victory points, at which point you will finish that round, and that person, uh, whoever has the most victory points, will win the game. Or until you run completely out of events, at which point the game will be over. You'll see who has the most points on your handy dandy not quite so much little score tracker and then that will be they'll be the winner of edge of humanity and that in a nutshell is how the game is played Alrighty then, Edge of Humanity from Golden Egg Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go to the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two to five players is a great player count, but I liked it best at three, four, and five because it just made the bidding a little bit more interesting because the bidding phase is a very interesting phase and it also means that there's more choices out for you there for you to pick from. Now, don't get me wrong. I still enjoy this as a two-player game, and I still think I probably could recommend this as a two-player game, because I still had fun the one time I played as a two-player game, but I liked it best at three, four, and five. Now, that being said, your first couple games of this, especially at the higher player counts, can go very, very long, because like a lot of deck-building games that try to do different things, when you're first learning the game, it's all foreign to you. Like, oh, I, I'm reshuffling my deck, so I get to look at this this row of people out here. Or, oh, I'm actually, oh, I actually physically lose this card. Or, oh, this event killed me, so now I'm done for the round. And that's really interesting, and I like nearly everything that this game does, but it's going to make it those first game or two, most of the time, uh, just the first game, is going to go a lot longer than you plan it to. Because it says it's, uh, I think it's... 45 minutes and our first game lasted like two hours but after that it was generally about an hour 45 minutes especially at the blower player counts another comment of this game is some people are not going to like how unrelenting this game is i don't want to say mean because mean implies that it's like mean to specific people i think this is just an unrelenting game each and every event for the most part is just gonna it's just gonna keep punching you down which actually kind of works towards the theme because it's a post-apocalyptic wasteland. You are spending your items so you can just survive and build safe houses and bid on stuff. And I don't mind it so much, but I actually kind of like it. But I feel like some people are not going to like just how mean this game is to each and everybody who plays with those event cards. Another con that I have with this game is the fact that you can lose a turn. If you die, your turn is over. And that's just not fun. Now, granted... I like it because it adds to the meanness of the game, but I know some people are absolutely going to hate the fact that they can lose a turn. Now, it's not like a cheap lose a turn for the most, of the part, most of the time. Most of the time it's like, all right, I'm getting dangerously close here. You know, I have one or two health and I'm, you know, I'm on the edge right here. I'm on the razor's edge. I really should heal, but I'd rather do this, which makes it a little bit better. The fact that most of the time you can heal, like you have cards that will let you heal. But still, some people are not going to like the fact that a modern hobby board game has a lose-your-turn mechanism. Any other cons I have with the game? You know, um, I'm not the biggest fan of the artwork, but that's more of a personal thing. Like, I understand. I, I don't know. It, it just, it looks weird to me. But that being said, I don't think it's going to detract from the game for most people. That's obviously your mileage may vary kind of thing. Oh, the box. The box is just gigantic. This is a humongous, gigantic box for what essentially amounts to like a stack of cards that's like this big. And I understand that they're they're looking at expansions in the future, but honestly, this could have been in a Star Realm sized box. Pretty easily with just dividers or something like that. Not a Star Realms, uh like a, a, a not a Star Realms. It wouldn't fit in Star Realms, but like a I can't think of the name of it. But a different box, like Cards Against Humanity style box, I guess, would be what I would say there. It could definitely have been in a box like that. But I do like the fact that they're planning for the future because I hope that they have more expansions in the future. A lot more expansions in the future. Any other cons I have of the game? Oh, the, the player, the map, this, this, this point tracker. I hate this point tracker. I hate it. I hate it so much. Whatever, especially if you're playing a five-player game, it's really hard to tell where everybody is on the board. And there's some times where, like... You had somebody or had something and then it got destroyed or something like that, that you won't 100% of the time be able to go back and retroactively count all your points. So it is important that you keep track of the point tracker. And I just don't like how the point tracker works. It just, ugh, I didn't like it. Last con I have in this game is that, and this is a weird con, the theme comes across excellent it really does the feel of dread and scrapping and trying to survive 
comes across very well, but the actual themes, the stories that they present do not come across that well. They all kind of just kind of blend together. And each time that I've played the game with different people, I've been like, oh, do you want me to read these cards? It's like, yeah, let's get into the story. And then after like the third card, they're like, yeah, we, let's just see what happens. Because I don't know. And I, and I feel like, I feel like the fact that, the, <clears throat> that later on you can kind of mix and match cards to create your own post-apocalyptic, you know, story made it so they had to make it just a little bit more generic than they would like. I mean, you understand what the story is. It just doesn't come across as much as you would like, especially considering how well the theme of the game comes across. But, why is that backwards? Those are all minor problems because let's get down to brass tacks edge of humanity is fantastic it is a great deck building game i will be adding it to my collection and i really really look forward to expansions in the future for this game it's my favorite deck building game of all no i still like aeon zen better uh, i still think i like heart of crown better vikings gone wild but it's still it's different enough to me that it warrants being in the collection because this does not feel like any other deck builders, which I think if you like deck builders, that's what you want. You want three or four deck builders that feel different, and this one feels different. So what do I like about it? First and foremost, it is mean. It is unrelenting. This game will slap you and slap you and slap you and slap you and just keep slapping you until you die. Then you come back, and it'll slap you some more. I like that. I like the fact that it provides you with difficult choices sometimes in those events. I like the fact that it slowly ramps itself up, too. Once you get that gun, that makes it a little bit more interesting. And then in the third one, the alien one, you start, like, bidding, like, some pretty weird stuff for bidding. Like, you're bidding... Well, I don't want to spoil too much, but it changes up the bidding slightly, and it makes the bidding more interesting, especially if you have some really good cards out there. And I like that an awful lot as well. I love the different special abilities in this game the survivors and the buildings in this game is really cool i'd say even more so the survivors because they're going to give you these persistent long-term special abilities it's not just points it's oh now i have this or oh i can do this a little bit cheaper or oh i win ties and bidding I really like that. I really like that an awful lot. I like the bidding phase. I like looking through all the cards in that bidding phase and being like, ooh, this one's really good, but how much am I willing to spend? I love the fact that there's some cards that will really help you out in the short term, but then that next round you're going to be screwed on how many cards you have, and I like that an awful lot. Uh, I like the fact that they really tried to shove the stories down our throat with theme-wise. And I love the theme. I do. The theme, theme, theme comes across well, which is not something you typically say in deck builders. In fact, I don't know if I can say that about any other deck builders. Like, I love a lot of deck builders, but I can't think of anywhere I'm like, ooh, this theme is great. No, the theme of Dread in this game is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, component-wise, the cards are nice. Components, completely fine, except for that, that scoreboard, which I'm not a big fan of. But in the end, Edge of Humanity, if you are looking for a different experience of a deck builder, Edge of Humanity is definitely one I can recommend. I liked it an awful lot. It's going to be staying on my shelf in this massively oversized box, and hopefully one day I will fill this massively oversized box with expansions uh, that do a whole bunch of other post-apocalyptic goodness. So that is Edge of Humanity from Golden Age Games, one that I really enjoy, definitely can recommend if you are in the market for a deck building game that is not going to like you, that is going to hate you, uh, but that definitely brings something new to the table. Check out Edge of Humanity. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Let me know in the comments below, casinos, yay or nay? For me personally, big yay. Love going to casinos, love playing uh, blackjack, poker. Uh, I love just sitting there on the slots and just, you know, playing like the five slet slots and just keep getting free drinks. You just bet on black and red, you just sit there for like an hour and you can get completely... Woo, you get a whole bunch of free drinks, which is great, but I love casinos. Let me know in the comments below. Casinos, yay or nay, and as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.